All right, we've got a real treat for you next. We will have on the stage 875 Major League saves. First off, Lee Arthur Smith. Few pitchers in the game have had the impact that Lee Smith has had. He played for 18 Major League seasons. The guy had a Superman arm to throw in 1,022 games, third most in history when he retired. Lee held the major league record for career saves from 1993 to 2006 when Trevor Hoffman finally passed him. We don't hold it against him, but he did pitch eight seasons with the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> because he eventually joined the Cardinals after a stint with the Boston Red Sox. In 1990, when he joined the Redbirds, he went the entire month of July without giving up a run. In 1991, Smith reached 40 saves for the first time in his career. He tied Bruce Souter for the Cardinals' saves record. Then he finished that season 61 games. He recorded 47 saves. Still a single-season team record he holds with Jason Isringhausen, who is also here tonight. Lee was an intimidating presence on the mound, standing 6'6". He had enough get-up to bring mid-90s fastball to hitters, throwing some pure gas in the shadows of Wrigley, made for a tough day for most hitters. A six-time All-Star with 478 saves. Many are astonished that Lee Smith is not in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. He sure should be. But tonight, we welcome him to the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Joining Lee up there is Jason Isringhausen, a native of Brighton, Illinois. He enjoyed a long but painful baseball career. Izzy had two, two hip surgeries, three Tommy John surgeries on his elbow, a broken wrist, tuberculosis, and somehow found a way to rack up 300 Major League saves. In the mid-1990s, Isringhausen, along with pitchers Bill Pulsifer and Paul Wilson, were widely hyped, widely hyped as the next generation of New York's Mets pitchers. Izzy began his career as a Mets starter. He was 9-2 in 14 starts in his rookie season, but injuries derailed his career as a starter. He missed most of two seasons and was traded to Oakland, where he established himself as a top closer. He was an all-star at 2000. Jason joined the Cardinals as a free agent before the 2002 season and dominated as a Redbirds closer, helping them win the Central Division in 2002, 2004, 2005, 2006. He led the league with 47 saves in 2004, tying the record held by Lee Smith. He was an all-star in 2005, recorded 39 saves as the Cardinals won 100 games. He missed the 2006 World Series with a hip injury, and in the offseason, he underwent his second hip operation. Undeterred, he returned in 2007 as a closer. He was 4-0 with 32 saves, allowed only four home runs in 63 games, and batters hit only 179 against him. But before the next season, 2008, he left with lingering elbow tendonitis and a torn, torn tendon. The next season, he went to Tampa Bay. He pitched in only nine games before undergoing another Tommy John surgery. Jason finished his pitching career with Cincinnati, the Mets, and finally in 2012, pitched in 50 games with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. There should be photos in some medical books of his right elbow. <laughs> Courage is this man's middle name. Tonight, we're honored to honor Jason Isringhausen and his right arm with induction in the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. And joining Lee and Izzy on the stage, his name is Alan Thomas Roboski. But for many years, people knew him and still do as the mad Hungarian. He pitched for the Cardinals, Kansas City, and Atlanta, but his best years were here in St. Louis. He was raised in California, drafted by Minnesota, but didn't sign. Two years later, the Cardinals made him their first-round draft choice. He was a starter in the minor leagues, but a relief pitcher when he got to the bigs. Al quickly became a fan favorite because of his style of pitching. Long hair, the Fu Manchu. He tried to be an intimidating figure on the mound. He said he wanted to appear that he was 6'8", 290 pounds. <laughs> Players often exaggerate. Some players suggested this guy's crazy. He turned his back on the hitters, walked behind the mound, vigorously rubbed up the ball, pounded the ball in his glove, and turned and glared at the hitter. Most hitters didn't like that act, which is exactly what Al wanted. One manager also didn't like the act. His name was Vern Rapp. Vern Rapp tried a military discipline approach, which allowed no facial hair. Roboski and Rapp disagreed. Rapp suspended Al, who eventually shaved. When Rapp was fired, Al grew the hair back. <laughs> 
His best year was 1975 when he led the National League in saves and won the Sporting News Fireman of the Year Award. Perhaps his most memorable performance came on an ABC Monday night game, May 7, 1977. Game tied 5-5. Al loaded the bases against Ken Griffey, Joe Morgan, and Dan Dreesen. Al went into his mad Hungarian routine and struck out George Foster, Johnny Bench, and Bob Bailey. And the Cardinals won the game on a Ted Simmons home run of the 10th. For many years after retiring as a player, Al has been part of the Cardinal television crew on radio, or broadcast crew on radio and television. This is historic. We've never inducted a Matt Hungarian in the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame until tonight. Al Roboski. So there's 879 saves on that interview area. That's amazing. Thank you, Ron. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, the new commissioner of baseball, Rob Manfred, has a lot of pace of play enhancements. He calls them enha enhancements for the game. One time, when I was in probably junior high school, I was at a doubleheader between the Cardinals and the Pirates. They didn't have day-night doubleheaders then. It was just a doubleheader. And Al came in to the ninth inning of a game against the Pirates. Bill Robinson was at the plate. And every time Bill Robinson would step out and get back in, Al would go down and act like he was tying his shoe. Every time Al would get back up on the mound, Robinson would step out. You remember that? That was not great pace of play. Um, I'm sorry, but you're totally incorrect. <laughs> Bill Robinson was at first base. Al Oliver was the hitter. Oliver was the hitter, okay. And Al Oliver was a, a, a great left-handed hitter and really had some pretty good success against me. And... Uh, Bill Verdon was trying to get into my head, the head of the Mad Hungarian. That's very dangerous. <laughs> um, and so he had Bill Robinson call timeout and tie his shoelace. And I noticed that Al Oliver, it was the first time I ever saw him get upset because he wanted to just hit. And so he, I threw a pitch. He fouled it off. Robinson tied his shoelace again. Al Oliver was screaming at Robinson, leave him alone. I don't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. So then I went behind the mound and tied my shoelace. <laughs> and it happened, it happened, it happened until uh, finally Al got him. Uh, Lee Smith, speaking of pace of play, the first guy I thought of when I heard they, they were going to put clocks on relievers coming out of the bullpen into the mound was Lee Arthur Smith. Did you walk that slow naturally, or was that just something that you were doing? Well, I didn't see a whole lot of people running out there to face Mike Schmidt. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, I, I look at that clock now because I coach, and I look at that time clock. You know, I would have probably got one warm-up pitch, huh? <laughs> and I, I had to let him go, man. But, um, like I said, I, I wanted to make sure I get it right because when, uh, uh, when I first came to St. Louis, which was one of my favorite places to go and play, and um, Joe Torrey was my manager most of the time, and Joe looked like one of those guys that, um, you know, he could, like – you know, kill a whole family and go have a big breakfast. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to go in his office. <laughs> and uh, one thing I've learned in working with uh, Brad Thompson at 101 ESPN <laughs> is that Jason Isringhausen was as fun a teammate as there ever was. And when somebody texted in the other day and said to Brad, who is your greatest mentor? The first, guy, first name he mentioned was Jason Isringhausen. How important was it for you, especially after, like Ron said, everything that you had been through to mentor the kids that were coming up? Uh, it's, it's something that was very important to me, and it's something that's still important to me as I work with the Cardinals now, working with all the minor league guys. And it's just, uh, you know, it's something that I didn't think I was born to do, but I really enjoy it. And in 2006, when I went down with a bad hip, I mean, I had nothing else to do but talk to these kids about how to deal with pressure in the big games. And it worked out well for our, uh, all of our young relievers that year. And a young kid named Adam Wainwright stepped into the ninth inning role. And we, we talked about, you know, counting our breaths and slowing things down. And next thing you know, he's getting mobbed on the mound. And it was a, it was a great feeling. And I was just as proud of, of my kids, so to speak, as if I was out there. You guys were all starters, right, before you became relievers and closers. Talk about, and it's something that none of us will ever get to experience, and very few people in the world get to experience, 
the adrenaline of being out there for the 27th out. And I want all of you to answer this. Izzy, if you can start. Well, it was, you know, I, always, I came up as a star, like you said, and I had a guy in front of me named John Franco who was like my mentor coming up, and uh, I wasn't going to take his place. So, uh, you know, I started, I got traded to Oakland, and then I remember going in for my first save was in Yankee Stadium, and I had to step off the mound, and Jason Giambi comes over to me, and he goes, hey, you all right? I was like, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> I, was, I was scared to death. We, he said something to me and made me laugh, and I went out and got the save, and I was like, that feeling is something I'll never forget. And the, it's kind of hard to find it now, but it's something that's amazing. What about you, Lee, the, the, uh, the thrill <laughs> and the adrenaline of getting that out? Well, for, for me, when I, like I said, you come off of the starter, and um, I had a general manager that was really blunt uh, by the name of Dallas Green, and he said, hey, uh, Smitty, you, you're only going to go two innings, so go to the last two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> but in, in plus, in, in all the all fairness, you got, uh, the Cubbies actually had a pretty good close by the name of Bruce Suter, so I had to find a, a spot. That's why I thought of starting, but my first uh, idea of being in a in the big leagues was still go, going to be the start, you know. But uh, once I got out there, I just hated that idea of losing. But there was nothing better than having a team wait to get that ball to you. It was an awesome feeling, especially from my little brother Ozzy telling me, come on, Leroy, get it right. I'm like, but, but my name is Lee. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Al? Well, when I, when I started, um, really, it was, it was just the beginning of closers. And uh, if you were a young player in the minor leagues, that if you were playing uh, pitching in the bullpen, you had absolutely no chance of going to the big leagues. You know, everybody kind of evolved. Um, a young pitcher was either going to be a starter, he was good enough to be a starter, or, uh, you know, you just had to go find something else to do. So when I got involved in everything, I was like, came up as a, you know, a very successful starter in the minor leagues, but I didn't have this size, these guys. You know, also, Izzy, remember when I started, there was no Tommy John surgery. There was no rotator cuff surgery. So if you had an injury like that, you either had to invent, reinvent yourself as a break ball pitcher or you went home. And, um, you know, it's just amazing what medical has done today. But, you know, as, as a relief pitcher, and, and I think this is the interesting thing because I always have this argument with Danny. I think managers today have said that it is so hard to get that final three outs that I think they psych out most of the pitchers because every one of us at one point never got a save or never was put in that position. And as a young player, I knew that if I could feel comfortable and accept that pressure, I could separate myself and I could be somebody special. And so I just conditioned my mind to that I wanted to be in that situation. I was gonna feel most relaxed, very comfortable in that situation, had a job to do, and, um, you know, and you had to do it every single day. You know, you had, you had 10 pitchers, and, and um, nobody wanted to hear that you threw so many pitches yesterday, or nobody said you, you threw three innings yesterday, you had a job to do today. It's a lot different. The managers take much better care of the, of the pitchers, and that's why you're seeing guys have the longevity that they have today. Now, speaking of being relaxed in the job, and Lee Smith, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but legend has it that to relax prior to coming into a game that you would take a nap. Is this true? Well, it was sort of tough uh, here in St. Louis because you guys had a dude by the name of Tom Pagnazzi. He had this thing about the hot foot. So I had to find a uh, place to take my nap. But that was nothing better than waking up with a three-run lead, man. I'm telling you, that was, that's awesome. I mean, you're talking about refreshing. It was awesome, and, and when I was here, we had, um, you know, Todd Warrell through hard and I did, he was my son up, man. I'm like, hey, I got it made here, man. But I would always go down to the ground crew room, and um, I, I never forget, I'm in one of the guys' uh, trucks, and I'm there with my, um, my both feet hanging out the window. <laughs> and um, some guy screams at me, hey, Lee, it's, it's the ninth inning, I, gump, I jump up, Pag Nazi got both my shoestrings tied together. <laughs> 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 I can't get out. I can't get out. But I'm like, oh man, unbelievable. Luckily, it was a rain delay, so I had it made. But you know what? It was it was just you know just a great feeling. Like like he said, early in in my career, you know, you think about it as a reliever, it was like a slap in the face. Like he said, being uh, because you, none of the starters wanted to come out of the game. I can't imagine coming here wanting to come in the game for Bob Gibson. <laughs> I think I'd pass <laughs> on that one. But you know, it was just um, it was just awesome feeling to have that someone want to give you that ball in that situation. 
Izzy, uh, you're from Brighton, Illinois. How cool was it to come here and essentially pitch for your boyhood team and your, your hometown team? Yeah, I think that was a, it was just a, a dream come true. It was one of those things where I grew up watching Ozzy and Lee and everybody, and uh, now I get to be a part of this this family. It's like once you're a once you're a Cardinal, you're you're always a Cardinal. And being from a, a small town of Brighton, I know it's on the other side of the river and all, but it's still uh, it's still close to home. And uh, I had the chance to come here as a free agent, and I jumped on it. And just the hardest part was learning how to tell people no, you can't have tickets. That was about all I had to do. And uh, <laughs> And, or hearing it from Dad when I, when I pitched bad and he had to hear about it in the cafe the next morning. That was the worst part. <laughs> uh, finally, we've had such a, a great history here. And uh, Al was our first truly great closer. But then you go to people like Suter and Lee Smith and Izzy and uh, obviously Trevor Rosenthal. And now O is having such a, a terrific season. It, it really is remarkable, the run of closers that we've had here in St. Louis, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it goes back, you know, like we were talking about Al and then Bruce and then Lee and then you had Dennis Eckersley mm -hmm. came through here and uh, and I think it, a lot of it had to do with when we had Tony here who was great at managing a bullpen and kind of started the whole one inning closing thing and he, he always started with his pitching staff, he always said he wanted to start at the ninth inning and move forward. So that was part of it that he put in good closers and good people to pitch at the end of the game. And uh, just to follow when people's footsteps like are here now, it's just been a, an honor. One final thing for each of you three. Uh, none of you, uh, you two especially, Al and Lee, had to pitch with social media. You had to pitch and close with a little bit of social media. But it's unbelievable now, the, the extra noise that's out there in regards to the closer's role. And Al, I didn't get to cover you. I covered Lee and Izzy, how is it that you avoided being devastated after blowing a save? Al? Well, first, if, along those lines, nobody knew about it if you blew a save. Uh, it wasn't like today that, you know, every game's on television and everything is so magnified. So, you know, you had a job to do and you went out there and did the best you could. And like I said, we used to, you know, you would never take a pitcher out because it was a save situation. Um, if Gibby, you know, which was usually our day off when Gibson pitched, so you knew you could do that. But after that, from the seventh inning on, every single day I warmed up if we were even ahead or behind, you know, by one run or something like that. And if they brought in Rich Folkers and in the seventh inning and he pitched well for two, two three innings, you know, he finished the game. But I had to warm up every day you know, for three innings and stuff. So it's, it's really kind of changed, and it's so much for the better. Um, these guys, I've, I've enjoyed the heck out of them because I've had a chance to broadcast through their career. Izzy's the all-time Cardinal saves leader. I remember Lee, and, you know, he's not very big, and he told me one time, <laughs> told me one time, he goes, you know, I don't like to start, I, I don't like to come in with men on base. And I'm going... <laughs> He goes, you know, I like to start an inning with three-run lead. And I said, no kidding. You know. Give him time to wake up. Yeah. Yep. But, I mean, but what had happened was because he was also very slow in his delivery that people could run around the bases on him. <laughs> so that is the reason why a lot of these guys started starting the inning and stuff like that because they were maximum effort and they could, uh, guys could run on them, so they started coming in fresh for the inning. And I think it's really helped, too. How about you, Lee? Well, I think it was because Pagnozzi couldn't count. He could only count to one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. No, but you know what? He, uh, the, the, we had a lot more guys in the days. He talking about that ran. You know, a lot of teams ran, ran a lot, you know. But uh, I wasn't that slow to plate, man. <laughs> Your motion. <laughs> yeah, most of that. But you know what? It was just one of those uh, one of those things like when you think of the closers now coming in in that eighth inning. You, I don't know what it is about that eighth inning, but I would, I would love to come in in the eighth inning. There's nothing wrong with that. But only one out. I don't want to think too long. Right? <laughs> but um, anytime you just think about the situation where relievers and the, the closers as of being fresh in the playoffs and things of that nature. And really, you back then when we came up, there was only 10 guys on the staff. So we didn't have those guys that, mm -hmm. you know, would go out there where we can pitch one inning, uh, one hitter or something like that. So we pitched a lot more innings. But I just love coming in the game when the game was on the line because I, I, I just – Took a lot to get me going, and, and Ozzy was back there screaming at me, hurry up and throw the ball, you know, but I just enjoyed playing the game, and I hate to lose it, man. How about you, Izzy? 
No, I think it was mainly, it's just, as a closer, you knew you were either the hero or the goat that day, and there was no getting around it. I mean, Bruce told me, you're the only guy that comes to the field knowing if you have a bad day, that usually the team's going to have a bad day. You're not the starter who can go up and get five runs up, and then, you know, the team come back and win. But uh, knowing that I could pitch the next day, so if I did go out and blow a save, then you get to jump right back in the next day, and you kind of forget about it. You go home that night and forget about it. Then the next day you can get right back in there. So that was part of it that we could pitch every day, which made it a lot better than sitting every five, fifth day as a starter. Right. One more thing from Al Robosco. Yeah, I just want to say one thing. I'm, I'm really honored to be here with the, the caliber of these uh, you know, inductees and everything, and, and it's so much fun for me to kind of relive so many, everybody's life and their careers up here. Um, but I do want to say one thing. What makes St. Louis so special is our fans. The fans are the greatest thing. Uh, you know, there's, there's 74 former, uh, I think it's 74 now, former St. Louis Cardinals that live in the vicinity. And that's a testament to each and every one of you. Because we came here, you accepted us, we played, we tried our best, didn't always turn out, but uh, you accepted us all the way. And then we found out that this is the greatest place to bring up a family. And so I just say thank you very thank you. much. Al Raboski, Lee Smith, Jason Isringhausen, they finished 436 Cardinal wins during their careers. And as Ron mentioned, 875 career saves. And it is our pleasure to welcome Al Raboski, Lee Smith, Jason Isringhausen to Thanks the again. St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 